Okay, let's have a look at how the week has closed and what we can look forward to next week in terms of trade plans and movement. I want to start with Bitcoin as Bitcoin appears to have found a major low for the next swing. I covered this in yesterday's video. Looking at the weekly chart, I want to view this as a sharp wave 4 completing here. I can't rule out that it could turn into something like a triangle, but I doubt that right now. I think it's looking very bullish and a low could a low is probably in for wave 4. So a number of scenarios now. If this is really wave 4 here, uh, I'm looking for a move much higher in this still. Now the first thing to consider is how far it may extend. Now if this is wave 4 and we're looking at wave 5, the first idea for wave 5 is often that wave 5 will equal wave 1. And we have a length of wave 1 here of 1163. So I wrote about this this morning. I think it's coming in at uh, 29... Just one second. Two thousand nine hundred ninety-three for wave five equaling wave one. So that will position it just slightly to a new high here and re a reversal. So so far it looks like it's just made three up. So I'm looking for wave four and wave five. And when it hits that two nine nine three level, it will be a warning that wave five here may be equaling the length of wave one. However, what I've noticed in Bitcoin is that fifth waves tend to extend. So my preferred view is that when we get a five up here, if we haven't already, I don't think we have, but if it does turn into a five and corrects, I will be looking forward to frankly extend beyond that, barring any type of um, sharp fall from there. So to look at another scenario on this for an extension, we can take a view of an extension from the start of wave one to the end of wave three for a 1618 extension, looking towards the 4800 level. There's another way to look at this as well, in that where we can take the in that we can take the length of wave one through wave three, and which is three thousand dollars, and add that to wave 4 from the low, which is at about 1800. So again, that matches the area at 4800. So if we can find a low, pardon me, if we can get a five wave advance here and a small correction, I'll be looking for this to extend beyond current highs of 3000 into 4800. I think things are coming together well for Bitcoin. The mania is not there and the chance of this running for an aggressive fifth wave is quite high, I think. So 4,800 is one level, and beyond that, there's a 2,618 extension towards 8,000. So that is my view on here from the reversal. Barring any sudden collapse, I'm going to look for this to continue higher for a more aggressive move up. Just we need to see the reaction at 2,993 to see what type of movement occurs following that. But if it can find a wave, low, sorry, a wave four low here and a move up higher, that is the current plan. Just as a contrarian signal, I was just checking what kind of news is running on Google for Bitcoin, and it has made it to the sun. So that's not the best. That's not the best uh, news, really, if you want to be long Bitcoin. If you know what the sun is, it's a rag in the UK. Geek Squad. So that was just one contrarian point. But in any case, I'm looking for this to find a way for and in advance. Now let's go to oil. I talked about a sell-off in this yesterday on this new high, breaking the for just a three-wave move here. So we're going to take that as X. It's looking good in wave three here. So I think to the downside that is. 
and I'm going to hold this as x and I'm going to look for another gyration lower beneath 42. So barring any type of reversal on Monday or Tuesday, I am looking for this to continue. When it broke the high here, there was a good signal today which I missed, but in any case, there was a three-wave correction this morning and a move down here now. So in the bigger picture, I'm still bullish on this overall. I feel that if we've made another X wave here, we're going to look for a series of waves down, see if we can get move from 7 into here to 11 waves into the $40, $39 region. And I will be looking for this to continue higher from there. So I'll move to basically 41, 40, 39. If that can materialize over the next couple of weeks, that would be great. But so far, it, I think there's no reason now to be bullish on this. The slight, the new high that it made yesterday is enough to, the sell-off from that new high is enough to suggest that this is just going to be a three-wave correction here. Okay, gold found that important low here from the three-wave correction. Now it's going to break, it's breaking certain levels, and I think this is the start of a good move up. So I'm not going to be bearish on this. I'm going to be bullish on gold and look for this to continue. I cannot put a count on this. I suggested something like 3-3 three, three, and now a move up, but I think the bulls have this and this should continue. There's also the daily divergence, and on the two weeks ago, we found an extreme low percentage in the number of small trader bulls, and that was a great signal. It matched wheat from a few months ago. So I'm looking for this to run. There's another point that I forgot to bring up. Oh, no, this is not the right one. One second. Seasonally, seasonally, gold tends to rally in summer. So if we found a low here on this move in July, historically this has a tendency to run in August through September and into the fourth quarter. So bullish on this, no change, dips to be bought. And uh, the monthly is looking aggressive. If we can see a good monthly close the Monday after next, this will be a good break and a reason to stay or get long, depending on your position here. From the recent low, well, again, I'm not sure what the count is here, but I feel that the bulls have this and I think this is going to break on the weekly chart, this longer trend line now. So I would be long this, and I think the same with silver. It's looking that from that flash crash a number of weeks ago, or rather just last week, it's looking like it just made a three-wave correction here. Now the key on silver is going to be this monthly close. If this month closes as an aggressive bullish hammer, I see a big move up in silver over the next month in August, maybe uh, September, October too. But I think we have a move up to 20 and a half in this. Even if it's just a big three wave correction, up, down, up, that would suggest we're going above 21. So I think silver has strong legs here for four or five dollars higher. And let's see that monthly close and look to get long this. I mean, the spike did mess up some things, but still, it did not break the low from 2016. And so the bullish edge is holding. And I want to see this rally from here. The important thing in gold is that two weeks ago, it found that 10% low. 
in small trader balls. It's only at 30 now, and it has a lot of room to run, and I think it's making the real break now. So I'm going to run with that. Two bullish ideas. So bullish gold, bullish silver, bearish oil for now, but bullish in the bigger picture, and bullish on Bitcoin. And I'm going to see if I can find a low in wheat. I like the idea that on the next low, this may be able to find a low. There's some divergence in the chart. And uh, there's a chance if it can find that low, I feel there's still a good chance for this to turn around and make a high above uh, towards six. At this stage, I'm not going to view it as collapsing from here. I'm going to see if we can get a continued bullish run and just look for a reversal into next week. Okay, let's go to the dollar. Again, there has not been any reason, reason to be anything except bearish on the dollar. Now, I can pose that wave three is coming in at some point and end of wave three, but I do not have any proof of that. There's no divergence. We, we get the very bearish flatlining stocks, and when you get a flatlining situation in the stocks, whether they're up or down, up like here, down like now, it is a continuation signal. There's no work to be done with that. There's no divergence on the daily. I don't have much else I can say about this, frankly, except that the monthly bearish divergence has been working and the move from January has been crushing this pair. I do expect a bounce at some point, but I would view that bounce as corrective and all three wave corrections in this are to be sold. Now, there is the possibility that like... US dollar, Canadian dollar, this just tends to run and run without finding a low. It is possible, but for now, I'm still going to look for a bounce in this. What I would say about the dollar is that it's reaching an extreme low. When we were at 10% and 11% in gold and wheat, we found it, found a low, and we we're close to that in the DX. So that is one contrarian signal. There is a horizontal level here, obviously, and it is possible to count this as done if this wave five part of wave three is extending. Aside from that, I don't have much to say about it. One other thing I would add is that COT positioning, the non-commercials are at zero line again. I think last week there were just 2,000 um, long side contracts. So historically, at least over the past eight years or so, seven years or so, when the dollar has come back down, when traders have come back down to a zero level in the dollar, they've added long contracts. So I would expect that at a tie in with a bounce. And if we can see a wave four bounce, then I would expect this to turn over and to see traders get bearish on this to get bearish on the dollar and for this to dip beneath zero but right now it's standing at uh it was 2000 something last week it'll probably drop to zero or maybe even negative when it comes out on tuesday this coming week so that's all i can suggest is that we have an extreme here in sentiment which is very useful and we have a cot level here at zero which is useful if there's um, precedence for this and we are reaching some kind of support level but that's all I can say until I see a bounce in this it's it's bearish with or without a bounce but until I see something actually materialize with a small five wave advance I can only suggest sticking with your positions against the dollar now looking at other pairs for how far this can go just a second okay let's go to the euro it's reaching the top of that zone I've had marked for a number of weeks now. I talked about 117 this week, coming in with the 55 EMA. The 55 EMA tends to be reactive on all time frames on the dollar. 
in a trending market, obviously not here in a sideways market, but in trending markets, 55 EMA is useful on Euro US dollar. Now on a smaller time frame, I still have it coming out of a triangle, whether this is the end to wave three probably, or maybe even wave five overall. I have it marked as wave five now, but it can be taken as wave three, which is probably more likely. I am looking for this to terminate on the next high. One, two, three, maybe a bit of sideways four, and a move up to one, one, seven and a half or so, and then a turnover for a bit of a bigger correction. There's still some divergence on the four hour. This does look like it's starting to, you may be able to make a wedge here actually. If we can take this out of the triangle, <laughs> if we can take this as one, two, three, four, and we can see a little wedge here, we may be able, be able to find the high in this at the beginning of next week. In any case, looking at this one, I feel it's close to a high. The other thing with the euro, traders are committed very heavily to the long side in the euro. They blew through Jackie's bearish um, QE comments this week, didn't believe him and just kept buying it. So we have an extreme level in traders committed to the euro. They are very, very bullish at levels last seen Well, last Tuesday, 83,000, 70,000, 99 here back in 2011. So it's the highest since 2011, highest number of traders committed to the long side of the euro. We do have a triangle thrust here. It's looking likely as that. It's small traders are entering that long extreme but so far nothing too extreme about it it's just entering that area there's not much more i can say i've been suggesting to stay with the long euro position for a while now and to be against the dollar as well so i can say that it's near a high but i have no proof of that there's no proof that it's reversing so stick with it if you're long because stocks here are fully bullish and I'm believing that this is making this has made here a major low. So if we do see a correction, I would just look for a three wave correction of some kind and a continued long position in this. Now, if this extends further beyond this, I mean, if it does something like US Canadian and just keeps going, it is possible. But there are a number of factors coming in to pose some resistance here and now. Okay, on Twitter today, going to cable, on Twitter today I posted about a possible wedge in cable, the small inner wedge here. This looks good, I think. I feel that we can, if it can hold today's low on Monday, it's looking decent for a continued move up for a wedge. Now, this would be a small wedge within what I'm deeming to be a larger wedge whether it's for wave C or it's leading wave one, I don't know right now, but if we get one more high, technically we have enough here for this high, but so far the decline from the high this week is only three waves. So I'm looking for this to continue. I like the wedge idea here. So there may be a buy on Monday morning for a move up in cable. Now, again, I'm not sure if wave four came in here and we had our truncation or if we're looking at wave four here and another move down, but on the next high, I'm still looking for a move in, a move down in cable. How far that will go, I don't know, because I have two possible counts of truncation or leading one, but I am looking for a move down on the next high. The pound has been weaker than the euro, so I'm not looking for such an such a kind of like relentless, truculent move. I am looking for this to turn over, probably on the next high. So I like the idea, one more high in this, and then a rollover. So a move to 31, 32 perhaps, if it can 
thrust through this to the top side. But anyway, one more high and I'll work it from there. Okay, I went over this on Twitter this morning too. I'm not yet bearish on Australian US dollar. I feel that if this is going to be a B wave triangle into here, we've had wave one, wave two, I can count five waves here for wave three, and if we can find a wave four that holds above, well, technically above 77, the low 77s, but I feel it should hold 78 level. And I'm looking for a continued move above 80 towards 81 or so. So continued move up in Aussie US dollar. So no change there. At the close of the month, the stochastics will be up at an 80 level and it will be open to turning around. So if that's just a five wave thrust out of the triangle, I mean, this can stand extend. Wave three could, it, it, how I'm looking at it now is it's one, two, three, four, five, and maybe wave five will extend. Or if this is more bullish, it is of course possible that we're looking at wave two here. Let me, let me start again. Wave one, wave two, one of three, two of three, three of three, and then it just keeps extending like that. That is a situation that may occur if the dollar truly collapses. I cannot, it's just one thing to keep in mind as a possibility. So if you're long this, I see no reason to drop it, just like Euro, US dollar. It's looking like it's got another move up. There's no harsh warning of that's come in this week. So stick to the long side in this and any corrective dip, any type of flag situation could be bought here, I think. I'll see what comes in Monday afternoon on this. And New Zealand US dollar? Now I talked, I think two weeks ago, I talked about the extreme commitment of traders to the long side in the New Zealand dollar, which is at an all time or at least recent extreme, higher than the 2013 position. Now, there's been no reaction against the New Zealand dollar so far. The level I mentioned breaking is just about there. If we get a break here, we can then deal with this as a three-wave move and then a possible turnover. There's really not much more I can say about this, frankly. The bulls have this now. There's no trade that I can see. For, uh, to the long side, you would have to already be in this. There hasn't been much of a flag situation here, just a minor, a minor three-wave correction there. So in terms of entry positions, there's not much to go with here. If you're long, stick with it. It's just there's a warning here on the break, but it could easily make it to a level like 77 up here, and then we can look at it again. So until I see some type of divergence and exhaustive move, I mean, it technically is there, but this will end up popping up. There's nothing really to work with right now in New Zealand US dollar. Just the long should stick with what's been working. That's what I would suggest. The longs are in control of this. So of these four pairs, cable looks like it's near a high, and I would suggest that euro looks like it's near a high too, but Aussie US dollar has a couple gyrations more, I feel, and New Zealand US dollar still looks like it can move up a bit higher. So the dollar needs to start to prove itself. There are components there which traders can use or which suggest that a dollar low is close. But without price action and without a commitment by traders to the long side in the dollar, there's nothing really to work with in terms of setups there. The dollar is bearish, the dollar continues to fall, and that should be celebrated as a trade, as a continued trade. 
dollar to the downside, everything else still to the upside. Just be wary of signs of, of a reversal to come in without proof, however. It's like, it's like forebodings, like portending a reversal, but without proof, forget it, nothing's there. Okay, one thing we did get a reversal in, which I'm pleased about because I was talking about this, I don't remember when, last week, because of the three wave movement here. It did suggest that we would see a three wave movement here and we got a massive reversal. Now, one thing that suggested that this might reverse is that there was no flag situation on the daily. If this is going to be bullish, it will slow down a bit. It will kind of make a bull flag. It will rest, recuperate, and new traders will come in and, and force it higher. There was none of that. It simply reversed. I'm taking this as a three-wave move with a very heavy sell. So what we're looking at on the bigger in the bigger picture is that we're going to aim for the Z-wave move to 102. Any move down here which breaks the Y low but holds this low is going to be bullish. Now the three is here, the three is here, and I'm looking for this to maintain, or rather make one more three wave decline here. So the whole thing, if you want to view it, I mean, it doesn't have to be WXY, it could also be, the point is that it's three, three, and I want to see one more set of three. So it could be like a huge WXY. It doesn't have to be WXYXZ. It's one way to interpret it, which is what I've gone with. In any case, this would make it three waves. Must It must hold this low for this current count. I'll deal with it when I get there. If it breaks this low, there is still a bullish count underneath it. I don't prefer that. I'm going to work the idea that it will hold this low, but I can also look at it breaking the low and then a bullish move setting up after that. So either way, I'm bullish on it once it gets here. But for now, at this level, I am bearish on it. So any chance to sell this next week, I think should be taken. Any type of bearish flag, small three-wave correction, there will be a setup for that. It should be sold into next week. It's looking very bearish. So the bigger idea is a breakthrough, break of trend support and a break beneath 102. So I'm glad this worked out. Let's see it's power, let's see it power through, find a small three wave correction on any time frame and sell into it for a few hundred points. Okay, um, Euro New Zealand. I'm going to hold this bearish here. I don't have a bullish setup, so I'm going to look for this to come down and to break the A wave low here, and then to look for a reversal to set up for to the long side. So there's no essential change here. At this stage, I'm not going to switch to the long side. I want to see it come down for one more wave. And if it can do that, if we can get one more wave down here, I will then look for a move to the long side in this. So no, nothing more to say about that. I'm looking for a bigger three wave correction of this five wave advance last year, which was off of bullish weekly divergence. So any three wave correction beneath A into maybe the 61.8 level, maybe a little bit deeper on a spike down, who knows, but I'm looking for this to hold. And let's see if we can find a reversal off this. I don't have a setup to move higher here. I feel that this is just three waves from A to B there. So I'm gonna to look to the downside. It could be posing some kind of triangle for a B wave such A into here, and it could be, 
but okay, that was not the best drawn triangle, but you get the gist of it. A triangle for a B wave and a thrust down for C. That's a possibility, but I'm going to hold this as a C wave for now. Euro Australian, on the other hand, is looking very bullish. Now, firstly, there is bullish divergence here on the daily stocks. And that is reminiscent of the daily bullish divergence we had in New Zealand US dollar a number of months ago. Now, also the weekly closed as a strong looking candle. Now, I can see it coming down once more, possibly. I'm going to be bullish on this pair. Unlike Euro New Zealand, I'm going to look for moves to the long side in this pair. This trend line is has been broken both ways. So as such, we are going to disregard it because when it gets smashed to the downside and price immediately comes back through, I'm not going to use it. I can work an idea like this channel but I can also see something like, and we get one more possible correction so long as the divergence holds, <coughs> sorry, and a move up. It's possible. I mean, it, it's essentially what happened in New Zealand US dollar back here. We had a bit of a move up and a down move too. But in any case, I'm going to look for a long position in this. How to count it on a lower time frame? Well, it is possible to argue that there's five waves in here with wave five extending. I don't really like it, but if we get a corrective channel here on the lower time frame, it can be used. The correction will be important here. But in any case, it's looking like Euro Australian dollar is making a low here. I want to see the gap fill. I mean, that's been my preferred view on this. So correction will be important. That's about all I can say right now because it's reversed strongly there and the divergence is setting it up for a strong move up. Now, daily divergence runs for a while. So if we found the low, this is going to be a multi-week move to the upside towards probably above 152. So watch for a bullish channel on the lower time frames, And if that occurs, there will be a move to the upside. Unlike Aussie New Zealand, which did not present one, we need to see a bullish channel on this and then a chance to enter will appear. So unlike here in New Zealand, I like the ideas to, to the upside here. Channel is important. I am open to one more low, but uh, I'm favoring a long move here. And I think in yesterday's video, I presented another count on Euro pound. I'm not even looking to trade this. Although I was kind of confident in the hair, I've since been whipped around. And uh, I realized this week that we could put a flat here for this. Five waves into here, three wave correction for wave two. And now we've, we're probably finished wave one of wave three, small correction and a continued move up. So still looking for pounds, or not still, but now, as I said in the last video, looking for euro pound to come up above 92. I'm not going to stay bearish on this pair. I'm looking for this to go on. Let's drop the C idea and it'll have to be counted as wave three into here, wave four and wave five as a new high. That's going to be the preferred view now. So if there's a small bullish flag, there's a chance there, but I think there are better pairs to, well, considering how it's whipped me around, there are definitely better pairs for me, but if you see a chance to get long here, go for it. The flat here was difficult, but once it got here, 
it became, I think it was on this candle, it became apparent that a flat was starting to be favored. And so the longs look like they have this. Okay, and US dollar yen, as we know, it runs counter to gold. Obviously, I'm dropping the 1 2 1 2 count and I'm favoring a bearish move in this. It made just a three wave correction here. We did talk about this in the previous videos as a possibility. And now, with the bullish gold scenario, I am looking for this to turn over and to make a low beneath here towards 106, 107, maybe 105. That would be a first stop on this. So bearish US dollar yen. Now what's funny about this, last week I didn't mention in the video, I put it in the text box beneath the video in the description box, is that just last week we saw a massive spike in new short contracts. This is um, yen US dollar. So new, a massive spike up to um, 112 contracts out against the yen. And what happened? The opposite. So that's how it goes. That's how COT positions can work sometimes. It's hit that region of being in extreme oversold level for in commitment terms. Nothing unusual here. So looking for this to continue down. The main move I think is in gold and silver to the upside. I still like the long idea overall in the future as a future move, as a major move up, just not right now, not with gold being bullish too. Okay, and finally, Canadian pairs. Ugh, this has been absolutely crushing it. Again, flatlining. There's really, ignore the count. The count, I gave up on the count, honestly. There's no bounce whatsoever in this. It's extending and extending and extending. I will adjust to a count, adjust, I will label over the count once it finishes. Now, all I can suggest here is that there is still divergence in this chart on the four hour. It may end up doing something like this. If you remember, I put this in the last video. If you look at Aussie New Zealand, on the one hour, a number of weeks ago. It's coming down, coming down, coming down, coming down, looking, well, looking a little suspicious, but the divergence here would not break. So something like that may be appearing in US Canadian, maybe finally on the four hour, and to look for a bounce here. Now, I mentioned today that the moves have been so big there's a good reason, I think, to step back from buying the dollar or looking at dollar strength and looking at a larger move. Now, New Zealand US dollar is in two different places now. The monthly is actually, sorry, I shouldn't jump around. Let me deal with US Canadian first. There's nothing I can say on this except it's bearish and at some point it's going to correct. And when it finds that low, there will be a decent multi-hundred point bounce, two to three hundred points probably just a three wave correction, but it seems to be coming. It's just drifting down now in small steps, but uh, it's not stopping. So go to New Zealand Canadian. The monthly on this is bearish. I mentioned gyrations in this area. It is doing that. So we're looking at a number of gyrations here. I'll see on Monday if it can sell off, but I'm cautious of this being a break here as it tends to fluctuate around that level. So in this, I prefer to see the downside hold, 
but I want to see a clear chance to enter. Because so far it's only correcting up in a choppy manner. So frankly, I would stand back from this pair, let it resolve itself. If you're already short from the entrance up here in 9700, there's a good chance to hold on to this. But if you don't have a position, stand back from it, let it tell you what it wants to do in terms of direction, and move on from there. Because even though the monthly looks bearish, it is hold the weekly is holding at this stage within this range, within that hammer. So stand back, see what it wants to do, and then make a decision in this. Aussie US dollar powered back through the line, broke the line, powered back through. What is it doing now? Again, I would stand back from this until it gives a clearer signal. There will be a signal. A flag will appear. But uh, so far it's looking kind of... Could be a bit choppy to the downside. So I would stand back from this as well. Let it resolve. And Euro-Canadian, again, see the thing about Euro-Canadian is it's still underneath trend resistance. So I don't want to suggest a long opportunity here. But the key thing is the gap has been filled and the divergence is holding, and it's trying to force its way back up here. So again, I would wait and, and see what happens on this before taking a position. So far today's candle I think is not very important. The low from today or a couple of days ago, actually, Thursday. That was a new low. Well, it could be putting in a small flat here, actually. I would stand back from this also. There's no reason to commit to a position if you don't have a clear edge. I feel right now, Aussie-Canadian, New Zealand-Canadian, and Euro-Canadian are not offering a clear enough edge. Yes, it's under trend resistance, so you have something to work with. And yes, it could be a little flat in here. But let the lower time frames tell you then. Because the weekly is not so convincing and the stochastics are pointing down. So I'm open to a move down. But there is not enough evidence just yet, I feel. Let the price action direct you on the next move in this. But uh, so far, Canadian dollar's crushed it. Canadian dollar has been amazing since we found the high back in May, at the beginning of May. Okay, and something I only look at in Twitter, but I'll throw it up here, Tesla. Everyone's favorite stock to love or hate, I suppose. I put a count on this. Who knows if this is correct? I don't know anything about this company. I'm going completely blind here. This is not the way to do it. If you're going to look into a company, look into the fundamentals and the balance sheet and do the work. My work on Tesla is just a bloody chart. And uh, although it's really useful for movements and finding positions, it's not, I feel it's not enough for companies. So what I can, what I had in mind here is that I like the idea that wave three of wave three is completed in here. I mean, it may be a different count from what I have. I mean, it could be one, two, one, two, three, four, five, four, five. It doesn't have to be the one, two, the straight one, two, three triangle for four, five that I printed. It's probably better the way I just highlighted. I'm just wondering if we're going to see a sharp wave four, like we've just seen in Bitcoin. Sharp wave four and a move up. 
I'm wondering if Tesla is doing something like that, actually. So if we can find a low here, I would suspect that we have another low to come. If you look at the daily, there's probably five down into here. So if there's a three wave correction, there's a good chance of another low. There's some gaps in the chart here. So beneath 300 to fill some gaps. Now it may be, the count may be, hold on, let me finish the bearish, uh, sorry, the bullish case. That would suggest it's just a three wave correction like this and a move up. And of course for wave four, if this is wave four of wave three, the key level to hold above will be this. So the correction will have to hold above 270. That's the bullish count. Now what I would say about this is it is looking, based off the daily, it's looking like a five wave decline is probably taking place here. So whether this is going to be a three wave correction and we have another high above 380 to follow, or this is the start of a major move down, because I know some companies, some hedge funds are bearish on Tesla, like Hedgeye, they are short Tesla. If this is a new move or if this is a new move down or if this is just a correction before another move up, it still makes sense to get short here. Because if this is five down and we get a three wave correction of some manner, it could turn into something much bigger than just a three wave correction. So it is looking good to get short on this to see if it's just wave four and then it bounce up or a bigger decline. So I would say the odds in trading terms are favoring the downside here for the next move. And then if it makes a new low beneath 300, you can judge it there, see if it does a Bitcoin sharp move because this was sideways. So if this does offer a selling opportunity next week for another move down, it is possible this will just turn into a sharp wave four and then a move up. But the key is, the important point is, I think, that the odds favor another move down just now and that it could turn into something bigger than just a wave four correction. So probably better to look for a chance to sell the next trade up if it's, sorry, the next move up if it's a corrective move. So that's my current count. If this count is correct, we will see a sharp wave down and a new high. So that's one thing to look at. All right, I'll leave it there. Some of the pairs I covered I know were not very helpful with directions, but let's be positive about what is on the horizon. Bitcoin looks good to the upside. Oil, if we can move down towards 40, it looks good to the long side. And gold and silver look very good to the upside. And we'll see if anything happens with the dollar next week. Oh, and Aussie New Zealand looks really good to the downside. So, all right, good luck next week. Bye.